Good morning, Chris. How you doing? Good morning, my friend. I am fantastic. I am ecstatic that uh, Father Christmas has put down his alcohol-induced stupor to the side and he is now flying over. So I'm feeling a lot better today than I was two weeks ago. I thought I was only going to get a lump of coal two weeks ago. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. This is Brian Jones. I'm here with Chris Hood, a professional trader, world's most interesting man. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the market today. Um, so, man, I yeah, no, I, I know what you're talking about with the um, with the positions uh, you know, recovering quite a bit. And we get a little bit of a rally going on right now. Yeah, just as we thought, right? You know, the one thing that I was saying a couple of weeks ago was we needed the market to fall in order for it to bounce, right? So this is not unexpected. And remember, the Santa rally is pretty much the five days before Christmas and the five days after Christmas. So we're, we're smack bang in the middle. So this is not unusual. This is pretty much par for the course. The problem that comes in now is people have to control their way out of trades. Uh, you know, a lot of people who've been building trades in anticipation for this, we're doing well, we've got a lot of trades on the book that have done well. Now it's a question of making sure that you don't lose that money, right? Remember, the hardest thing in trading is keeping the gains. It's not making them. Making them is easy. You know, finding good trades is easy, but keeping them is uh, is a challenge because we tend to, we get sucked into this vortex of thinking it's never going to get any, you know, it's not going to get worse. That sell-off was never going to happen again. And then it does and wipes you out. So, yeah, this is fun. This this is when, you know, I don't want to sound like a genius on stocks, but literally a blind man could be throwing darts at a board. He could probably hit a winner. So, perfect. You know, tends to melt That's up awesome. I'm that yeah. guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the, the problem that comes in in the markets is it makes sometimes it can make dumb people look clever right I, I hate saying that you know i i'm not a genius by this means at all i still lose money at times the problem that comes in is that if you've got trades that are weak that are rising with everything else and you happen to win so you landed up winning on a weak structure the problem that comes in is not this trade it's the next one where you repeat that that trade structure that was weak and you lose bigger because you oversized. You thought that you couldn't lose, and now you have a problem. So the big issue now is going to be, this is great. The rally's nice. How are you going to manage January? Right, January is the key. So, so what? What do we? What's historically? How does January look? January is generally bullish. Okay, so January tends to be bullish, and it tends to favor small cap stocks. So TNA. Uh, which is the triple leverage small cap tends to do quite well in January. Um, the question that comes in is, you know, January is almost easy to make money because it's the start of a new year. The funds have rebalanced. You know, they want to get the year off to a good start. The problem that comes in, it's the consistency of the wins land up giving you the impression that things are never going to get bad. So we tend to oversize and we go into bad setups. It's always about that setup, right? That's the key. Avoid the bad setups, hold on to what you've made, keep tight stops, and trade consistently. So trade winning setups consistently. Don't chop and change. Don't, you know, run into chat groups and listen to people who lose money. Like that's the that's the biggest risk, right? We tend to think that a one winner makes you a genius, and it doesn't. So, you know, it's about consistency. So January tends to be bullish. We've got to be careful about the sectors that you pick. So make sure that you're still doing your sectoral analysis. Um, take the easy wins, all right? The easy wins are always the indexes. So look for relative outperformance at the index level and trade that. Um, you know, what trades you do, what strategies you pick, that's part of your plan. Um, but yeah, it's it's shaping up to be a pretty good rally. This week, if we can, if we can have a couple more days like we've had over the last four, you know this this could be quite big for a lot of people so yeah i know it's 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 been it's been kind to me especially <laughs> it's a refreshing after happy christmas brian happy christmas hey, that's thank the way you. there we thank go you. There thank you thank you but um, you know what the thing the thing that's important is we mustn't forget this is not random the, these things were predicted we knew this was going to happen like many things that we do in trading it's about the plan it's about the setup it's about patience it's about waiting for that setup and then building it, right? Once you've got the setup and you're waiting for it, then it's just patience. Most people don't have patience. 
Trader's patience is a hard thing to develop. So I'll, I'll share my screen and we can talk it through a little bit more in detail. So here, let's, let's open up a couple of charts, right? So if we look at, um, yeah, let, let's, let's start with SPY, right? So SPY, we got a really strong reversal signal back here on the 20th at around 3.30 in the afternoon. If you were trading it, and you took the signal, there it is. You would have gone long SPY. You can see the short covering rally that was in play from the 20th. Okay, so this is the week before Christmas, the five days before Christmas. So here it was, follow, this was one day, here's another day, here's another day, here's another day. And the fact that it just tracked the eight period moving average, every time it pulled back to the eight, it bounced up, pulled back to the eight, bounced up. That's how we can tell that the rally really started back here, all right? back there. We got a signal when it started there with the squeeze firing to the upside. We could see volume starting to increase. We could see volatility dropping off a cliff. That's where you needed to get in. A lot of people don't time this, right? So what they were doing was getting in here. This is where 90% of the people would start trading would be up in this area there because they needed to have confirmation, right? So if you've got bad signals, you don't have a system built that allows you to get in early, you miss all of this, right? A lot of people miss this. Let's look at the put call ratio, right? So if we go back here to the 20th and we go here to the 20th, look what happened. You see over here, we had this curve on the 10 day moving average. There was the signal that told us the rally was starting was when this started to curve to the downside. Remember when this turns to the downside, this is when the market goes up. Then when it turns to the this way, go back that way, market starts to have profit taking, right? So we could chop around here for a few days. We could move up a little bit. That's fine, right? So we had signals telling us this was it. We had a reversal signal, both on price and momentum, and we had the put call ratio turning below the 10 day moving average. So we knew this was gonna happen, but it's about patience. So what do you do when you get this signal? How do you trade that? So you could have been doing 30 day expiration at the money, long calls, right? You could have been doing a out of the money call debit spread based on the expected move for the next three weeks. You know, you could do any of those things, right? Now, if we move into a slightly different time frame, if we look at the last uh, day in a bit, right? This is the 27th, this was yesterday. In the morning, we got more signals to go long. So now I've just isolated it into a smaller time frame, And again, you can see the long signal triggering, we had a buy signal, we had two long signals and a buy signal. So what this means is we had three indicators telling us there was the time to get in. Now, most people wouldn't have been able to trade the pre-market. So you would have only been able to get in here at 9.30 when the market opened. But once again, tracks the eight period moving average and we go to new highs later on in the day. So what you need to be watching here is also the alignment between the futures market. So on the right-hand side, we see the S&P, we see the NASDAQ, and we see small caps. When these three indexes are all moving at the same direction, so what I look for is green. If I see a green cloud, green cloud, green cloud, green cloud, I trade. It's that simple. There's nothing more complex than this. And I think it's important to have simplified systems. So we look good, right? Now, when we start looking at individual setups, these are the majority of the stocks that I trade, that I've got long positions, both shares and options. Now, look at what we've got. We've got buy signals. We've got a green cloud. That means volatility is moving to the upside. So what we have here, volatility bands, what I'm talking about is price directions moving towards the upside here. So we've got buy signals. And I want you just to keep your eye on the bottom here, right? So when we have a long signal, like we have here with a little blue arrow and the word long, okay, that's the signal that will print here, right? So for SPXL, I'm waiting for a signal that has an 88% win rate. I'm just waiting for it to print. Once it prints, I'm going to go in. It will look like that. Once I get that long signal over here, it will give me that signal. So I can still trade a reversal, okay? This is a, a candlestick reversal, or sorry, this is an EMA a cross signal. I can still trade that if I want when it prints. Okay, so I can trade any of these combinations, but look at the profitability. I know that it works. I just need to wait for it to happen. If we look here at Lapu, 
There was a buy signal, still a valid signal. Look at that win rate, 60%, 3.5. If we move over here to SOXL, why would you not want to trade that signal? This is, this is the importance of knowing what signals work, how often they work, how often they fire. Now you just wait. Once you've built it and, tell, and, and you say to yourself, you know, tell me when that prints, when that signal prints, when this becomes a long, send me a message, tell me it's there, and I will go in and trade it. If you knew that it had a 90% win rate, this is going back over two years, with this kind of profit factor, <clears throat> you would dump a lot of money into that signal because it, you know that it's powerful. And we just wait. Here we have another one. Uh, this one is for FANG. So this is Apple, Microsoft, uh, Twitter, etc. cetera, those, those companies. We had a long signal print over here on the seven. Again, you've got a very, very high win rate. So knowing that, it's the patience of waiting for that signal to appear. So you could have traded here. Now on this stock, it's not optionable. Sorry, here, you, it's not an optionable stock. So you would have bought shares. You would have held through this, that's fine. But now you're getting this shift in momentum. You see how the color has shifted from red to green. And the pre-market is also going up a little bit. So here we can see the, pay, the power of patience as a trader is just knowing what you're gonna trade and when you're gonna trade it. So when you get the signals, you move, you act. You don't wanna be a trader that sits around creating trades out of nothing, right? Because if you look at the sentiment in the market, the market's going, yeah, it's all bullish. You go in erroneously and you'll look at a trade and you'll go, oh, this guy sent me a trade. And you can build a trade. And often what you do is you're trying to fit your idea into a trade that you've been given. Don't do that. Rather have a trade set up so I know Every time I keep this chart on my screen the whole time, I look at it and I just wait for these signals to appear. I get a little message. I go in and trade it. I'm not, I don't need to go and hunt for anything. I just have to wait for these setups to materialize. Here's another one down here for Tech L. Again, long signal, 85% win rate. Why would I not trade it? Here we have um, Treasury bull shares. So this one, I'm waiting for this to sig uh, signal a trigger here because this is the one that you put your profits into when you get your exit signals on the others. So you wanna be moving, when the market starts to shift, you wanna be moving your money into bonds. This one is the triple leverage 20 year bonds. We wait for the signals there. So this is almost like a, a counter signal. When this starts to fire long, you need to look at taking profits out of your other areas. Here's TNA, also very, very strong signal. Printed on the 7th of December. Now we're gonna be moving up again. TQQQ printed on the 7th of December. Look at this for a number. An 83% win rate with a 142 profit factor. Wow. You want these signals. This, this is really important because now that I know, here yeah, you could have bought that there, just follow the signal. And now you're going to get that rise. So we, the market and our signals were telling us things were going to happen around the 7th of December. We saw on that other chart, the 20th of December, we got some really close signals on SPY. So this is not a surprise. Our signals have been telling us what's going to happen over the last three weeks. So we just need to make sure that you know when to get out. Because once you've got the signals telling you to get out, get out. Don't think this is going to you know, carry on forever because it doesn't, right? We know that. So really, really powerful um, you know, stuff in terms of planning, you know, so when you plan your trading, you should have your stocks that you're interested in, you should have the entry conditions by which you will enter a trade. And then you should set it up in such a way that you're getting uh, a message when that signal actually appears, rather than, you know, the, the way that I see a lot of people do it is they would get a, you know, they go to CNBC, all right, and they hear this one, you know, a, a stock being talked about. They'll go into the graph, and by the time it hits the news, remember the price actions already happened. So you're behind the ball already, okay? You, you're behind the curve. Now what happens is you try and take your strategy and apply it to their idea. It doesn't work. And invariably, you land up getting a lost trade because 
the moves already happened. By the time it hits the news, the price action's already taken place. You've got to be in early. So th this type of process really makes a difference. So if you're out there and you're new to trading, this is the way you should be thinking, right? You know, if you don't have the indicators, or whatever, that's a different story. But in terms of logic, you should know what you want to trade. You should know on what basis you will trade and you need to wait for that basis to happen. And then you end up getting good trades. That makes sense. So what about the inflation trades? I know that you've got, oh, yeah. we've been trading uh, corn. Um, yeah, so corn, uh, corn, we've been in for a while. We, we got into corn here. So if you look at the bottom, the trades themselves, they're not, they don't have high numbers, right? So when I have these high numbers or low numbers, it doesn't stop me or force me to trade. I still look at the conditions, right? I still look at everything else, right? So here we've got corn futures on the left. We've got the corn ETF on the right. So I don't trade futures. My account is not set up to trade futures. So I use the futures pricing to determine what I'm going to be doing on the ETF. So I have to look at these two things together. So here with corn, we had a strategy entry <clears throat> over here back in November. Price consolidated, chopped around for a while. You can see this strong pivot line up here, added resistance. So we, we landed up trading in a range. Over here, you see these green columns? They are all systemic columns uh, or systemic triggers for us to add into our trades. So when we build the trade, when we start off at the beginning, what we're looking for is here's our entry, but on any green column or sequence of green columns, we can add to our trade. So if we've got a very bullish outlook, we would look at going maybe one contract of an option here. So on this date here on the 11th of November, you can see we had a signal entry over there, but on the 11th of November, which is here, as it broke out of this gray cloud there, that's the corresponding candle for that strategy, right? So we, we don't take the signal off the ETF, we take it off the futures. So we would have entered over here. And if you go across, that was on the 22nd of November. We go across to the 22nd of November. There would have been another entry column. So we would have entered again here. So we would have bought one contract, bought one contract, and so on and so on. What we were talking about was, there's a lot of resistance on this red line. So we could see it hitting the red line, falling back, hitting the red line, falling back. And what we were waiting for was a break out above the red line, which would have triggered a, another entry. So once we got above the line, we get another signal to add to our trade because now this line is moving from being resistance to support. We get into the trade and it fires off to the upside. And what we've targeted here is a price level of 6,300. So what's happening here on the ETF it's not a very high win rate signal. So we don't look at these signals here. We just look at this chart and we go, okay, time to add a new one. We go in and add a new one. So our trade here is up 71% uh, since we did it. We did what we call a combination trade. So we add a, se a series of long call options, finance them with a, bear, uh, sorry, a bull put credit spread. So we're using the credit spread to pay for the debits on the long call. And that means the trade is very efficient in terms of our own capital. So we don't use a lot of money on the trade, but it's a very powerful combination trade based on the strength of the signals. So corn is a commodity that's going to be directly impacted by inflation. So for us, this is our chosen inflation trade. We, we see this as being a better um, proxy for rising inflation would be on the corn side. So that's what we've been doing to trade it. And again, it comes down to planning. You know, it's, it's not a question of luck. We don't work on luck at all here. We work on you know, a very fundamental basis of signals, planning, set up the trade, wait for the signal, then execute the trade. It's proven in my case to be far more profitable trading that way than just randomly adding stuff. You know, and I did that. At the beginning of my career, I was very much into, you know, oh, I heard this on the news. And then you trade that. And then you go, damn, I lost money. It must have been me. No, it was the setup. You just weren't trading anything that was valid. Um, so, so this is the way that we that we do things. On, on a, ru time. a rumor is not a valid setup. Is that what you're saying? Rumor, you know, I'll tell you why. You don't know where it's coming from. 
right? So if you're sitting in a Discord chat group, let's say, and there, there are a lot of these places around, and, and someone sits there and goes, oh, have you seen this? You don't know the bias that that person has towards that opportunity. That, that person might be a pump and dump scammer sitting somewhere in East Europe. I don't know. I mean, I'm not picking on anyone in East Europe, but, you know, it, these things happen, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. there's nothing wrong in taking someone's idea and filtering it through your system. Nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. It's the blind following of other people's ideas that don't go through a system that is a problem because you don't know where that person's coming from. That person might have bought three weeks ago and they might be looking to get out. They might be misinterpreting certain fields of data. They might be having a completely different orientation towards a trade. Um, you've just got to be careful. You've got to find what works for you. And what I found with my clients and my students is finding a system that works for you is 90% of the win. Not copying someone's system. Don't copy someone's, other, someone's system. Rather, copy a process and make it adjustable to you. I have a lot of clients that live out in the Far East. They cannot day trade. They, they can't trade an hourly chart. They are asleep most of the time. They can only trade a day chart, right? So if you've built a system dependent on a particular time frame and a particular type of signal, right? So I have a lot of um, clients that trade the squeeze, right? So the squeeze is the Keltner channels or the Bollinger Bands compressing into the Keltner channels. We use six squeeze type indicators, right? We use an overbought oversold stochastic we use a B score. We've got a number of other squeeze type indicators that work together, right? So you can't just trade the squeeze by itself. You can, if you want to. Um, however, you need to know that the squeeze signal is valid on that trade and it has worked before. So we look at it and go, okay, if I took this part of the squeeze for the entry and maybe my stochastic exit, and maybe I add the ADX um, color bars shifting, the combination of those three is a more powerful trade than if I use just the squeeze by itself or just the stochastic by itself, etc. But it all comes down to the planning. If you don't plan and you don't know what you're looking for, you will fall for everything. And then your win rates are going to suffer, your profitability is going to suffer, your stress levels will start to go up. Um, you know, you want to avoid that. So you need, you need a process. And many people take years to define a process, you know, and it takes a lot of losses to define your process as well, because every time you win on an unprocess based system, it's almost like a mistake that's rewarding you. And remember, it's like jujitsu. Sometimes mistakes get rewarded, you know, right. it, it, it's the reality of life, you know? Um, so I have a is, question. Yeah. Um, on, in terms of, okay, the recency bias, you talk about that a fair bit about people thinking that market's going up now, it's going to continue to go up or the market's yeah. going down. So it's going to go down and crash to zero. Yeah. Uh, what about, what's historically the case for, so we, we've talked about the Christmas rally. We obviously had a little bit of a, like the five days before, the five days after Christmas. Yeah. We didn't really get that but five days before but historically, when do things get a little bit dicey in terms of uh, the bullishness? Usually what you would look for in your indicators, you, you'd have to go back. You would probably need to go back into something like the put-call ratio, right? So this is how I would look at it. I would look for the put-call ratio, um, the 10-day moving average, to be somewhere between 0 0.5 and maybe 0 0.6. Okay, somewhere there. Because when it starts to get into these levels, right, these extended levels to the downside, that's when the market reverses pretty hard. So keep your eye on where the 10 day moving average is, not the absolute. The absolute can change in minutes, it, it can change really quickly. So you really want to keep your eye on the 10 day moving average. So when the 10 day moving average comes down into this area, you know, down here. This is where pain starts to get, you know, pain will come. This movement here was very painful for a lot of people in November. You know, it, it kicked a lot of people out of trade. So once you start seeing 
the 10 day moving average coming down into the sort of 60 levels down here, 60, 61, you know, start taking profits. If it starts triggering profit exit signals, take your money off the table, just wait patiently, right? Just wait patiently. Um, so that's number one. Number two, keep your eye on the ticks. When you start seeing the dominant color up on the ticks as being the orange rather than the blue, so you can see over the last two days, blue is by far the more dominant color. Um, it means buyers are in the market. When the, the ticks go down to being more, you know, yellow, uh, as opposed to blue, you know, buyers are not in the market, right? You can see, compare this here, what's the dominant color? So as soon as you start seeing these signs, and they're not going to, you know, the market will leave you uh, crumbs. There's small little crumbs of interpretation, and it all comes down to your ability to digest these pieces of information and put them into a cohesive plan. If you see the put call ratio starting to drop and it's now, you know, everyone's getting bullish. You see the, the, the ticks dropping into the yellows consistently. You start seeing a lot of your stop losses getting triggered. It's probably time to get out. You know, take your money, sit on the side, wait for it to revert back to the mean, if that's the case, or if it's fallen through the mean, wait for a bounce to happen. Um, you know, that's the way that you would look for it. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be doing, you know, more stuff. Well, hold on, hold on one second, I'm on a video, but I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, quality control. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so, yeah, he just woke up. Uh, the, you know, the thing that you've got to be careful about is assuming that the market is a static organism. All right. So when we have three good days in a row, it doesn't mean we're going to have four. <laughs> you know, it, a, a reversal can happen at any time, but those reversals are often, uh, you know, predicated on certain other indicators actually doing stuff. So you've got to keep your eye on, you know, I watch the squeeze. I watch when signals start to shift. I watch momentum candles. You know, they will always give you early warnings, right? So, you know, one of the early warning indicators that we use is what we call the B score. When our B score drops below 50, and we have a squeeze firing and our squeeze is pointing to the downside. I'm just trying to see if we have any that we have done here. Like over there, for example, you see that white uh, triangle, mm -hmm. that squeeze, there's the red triangle telling us this is going down and it went down for a few, a few bars. And then our plus signals that we have over here were told us to get back in. So we went back in and we, rose, we rode it to the upside, right? Everything comes down to the way in which your signals give you early warnings. Um, you know, there's some traders who like to let signals fire and then they trade. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that. If it works, it's a workable system. And, you know, for us, I like the early warning system. I like getting in maybe two to three days early. I can often get it at a good price. And then I let the trade do its job. I don't try and chop and change. And if it doesn't work immediately, I don't sit there and you know, try and adjust it. No, I let the signals work for me. Um, you know, a lot of people are on the internet. This is the only system you need. This is the only thing. There's no holy grail. You know, the, what works for me might not work for everyone. Um, it took me 20 years to work this out. It might take another guy five years to work out what works for them. There's no right or wrong. And I, I think it's bad for people to advertise themselves as being the only people who know like there's no no one knows <laughs> you know everyone's just trying to interpret things and you know i think as a trader what you've got to get to is a point of self-confidence so the only way you develop that self-confidence is have a system that can consistently deliver what you're looking for but if you don't have a system if you're just you know randomly adding you know garbage then you should be expecting random garbage results. Like that's, that's how it generally works, but it's hard work. This is not easy. You know, if someone's advertising a hack or, you know, you only need five minutes a day, you know, I don't know. I don't think that that's appropriate. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everybody wants to, um, it seems like they want to oversimplify stuff. It, it's one of those things where, it's it's like a lot of things you don't realize how much you don't know until you get into it yeah you know, it's it's it goes pretty deep it goes kind of yeah deep. i know you're i know you're 
you're a guy that focuses on simplicity or that the concepts. I try to. I think that the hardest part that comes in is everyone's idea of what simple looks like is different. Um, you know, I like what trading view does for me and the ability for me to build my setups and my signals the way that I can um, make things easy for me. I don't really do much. You know, uh, I sit around waiting for these things to change. I, you know, sometimes it can be a pretty dull day. Sometimes it can be a pretty busy day. Um, you know, I also do a lot of uh, day trading as well. So I will trade, you know, intraday, um, you know, intraday charts as well. I will trade, you know, any signal. If I, if I feel like the signal setup is right, I will trade it. But, you know, I think a lot of people tend to, they tend to want a result that is not conducive or not aligned with the amount of effort they're willing to put in, right? There's, there's a direct correlation in trading to the amount of learning that you do to the results that you get. Um, a lot of people look for the easy solution. The easy solution is, you know, sign up to this, you know, system over here, you know, and just wait for my emails kind of stuff. And, and you know, I've got products like that, but even in my product, I'm trying to teach people, uh, you know, educating people about how to become independent, how to build a trade for yourself, how to manage the trade on your own, rather than creating a dependency on someone else's technology, someone else's brain, someone else's ideas. I don't know how that would work if someone decided, if that person decided that's it, I'm done, I'm quitting, I'm retiring to the Barbados Islands. I'm gonna go sit there for the next 20 years. What's gonna to happen to your business because of that dependency? Um, so I'm against that. I, I really don't like it. I don't think it's fair on a client uh, to create a dependency. I don't think that's right. But you know, when you've built a system that says, look, I sit around trading the signals I like. There's no difference between me and anyone else, right? They might trade it on a five minute chart. I trade it on a daily chart, um, but you can trade any signal. The thing is you've got to make sure that the signal is valid. And most people just don't do that. They, they read a book and it says, you should trade the 813 moving average crossover regardless of the stock. And, you know, we know that doesn't work on every stock. It works on some stocks, not all, um, you know. And if you lost on that trade and you traded the wrong setup, you could inadvertently go back to, I'm a crappy trader. I'm not going to, I'm terrible at this game. It was supposed to win. But if your expectation was realistic and saying, you know what, if you trade this, you've only got a 71% chance of winning here. You know, is the signal valid? Is this a valid setup that you're going to take? If, if you look here, we have a signal there. We traded a different signal on the crossover here on the ADX. I know I've got a 71% chance that the next exit signal that I'm going to get here will be a winning trade. Now, this is my fractal forecast. This is where I think price of the S&P will be in 10 days or 12 days. It's tracking that line pretty closely. It might overshoot the line. But I knew when I go into the trade what my profitability expectation should be. That is far more powerful than anything else in trading. Because when you set your expectations correctly, you'll trade the right strategy. You're not going to be greedy on profit. You're not going to let a good trade go down the toilet. And you're trading a signal that's proven to work before. So I think that that's the most important thing when it comes to trading. So as we go into the new year, make sure your trading plan is adjusted to be very signal specific. Um, you know, if you can do that, I, I trade, here's a reversal uh, indicator that I have. This is built into my tools, but you know, here you've got the reversal indicator happening there together with the confirmation on the strategy here, breakout above support. Um, here you've got another reversal signal. There's another reversal signal. Here's the reversal signal, momentum, price, We've got, you know, we build these all in. So when I look at my EMA indicator, I know exactly when I get the crossovers that I'm looking for. I look at where my strategy is built around risk and then it will tell me when to trade. So this is the way to, you know, it works for me. I don't want to be like one of those guys saying, this is the only way, um, you know, it's just a way. 
and it works for me and it works for my clients. So, you know, it's, it's something worth looking at. If your trade results haven't been very good or you're struggling to get consistency, this might, might work for you. Perfect. Well, Chris, I appreciate it. We just got a few more minutes before the market opens. So I'm sure you got some uh, pre-planning and. Well, before I go, I'll, I'll show two things. So let, okay. let's put this down and see, uh, you know, see where these land up. So, SOXL, Soxel, uh, triple leverage, semiconductors. Um, we've got a very, very powerful signal that triggered back here on the 15th of December, 90% win rate with a 62 profit factor. Uh, we've been in the strategy since then. Uh, we've been building and accumulating our position since here. So we've been in since $45. Uh, stock is now trading up at 74 uh, we've been doing long calls, call debit spreads, uh, no, no credit spreads, unfortunately, on this one. Um, but this is a very, very powerful signal. So anyone who's interested, Soxel is a really nice opportunity. Another one that we're looking at is Google, uh, an 85% win rate. I'm waiting for the signal to trigger. It's sitting in our buy zone between plus one, minus one Keltner, just above the mean. We're in an untested demand zone. So what I'm looking for here, you could trade this this and this these three signals together often indicate a really strong setup so you could land up doing you know a put spread on google somewhere down you know below 2840 um could also be a very good trade uh, to look at over the next couple of days and then we've got fngu we we got into this trade on a crossover of the ema over here with a signal a shift in adx we got in at 10 30 on the 21st of december and we did a fractal forecast up to the 30th of December here. And you can see this lightly shaded line is the forecast in price and the dark green is the actual. And you can see how this is tracked pretty closely. We got a volatility band uh, shift to green. So this is our bullish indicator. Um, we've got a rise in volume. Our squeeze still looks positive. Very, very powerful signal still hasn't triggered. So we're waiting for that trigger on the hourly chart. Oh, actually it did trigger there. Sorry, I didn't see that there. We got in down here, we did get that signal. So we got in early, now we've got that signal in here. So if you're trading this, it's stock only. Uh, this looks reasonable for a rise up to, um, what's that, 43.59. So that's where our expectation is going for that trade over the next couple of days. So keep that in your mind, those, those three, Soxel, Google and FNGU and see where they come out so yeah we can we can get this um <clears throat> we can get this on record so when it works you can brag about it. <laughs> and if it doesn't work then we just, we'll just delete it, it. we we'll just won't bring it back up <laughs> <laughs> well this, like, this is know. this is something that's so important about trading not every trade is going to win right yeah. not every trade is going to win but when you've got statistics that tell you that the setup you are trading in the past has been profitable there's very little to doubt what you are doing. The key thing is, is what did you trade? You can take a really powerful signal and mess this up completely. You know, you could choose the wrong option strategy. I mean, this doesn't take options, but if you chose the wrong option strategy on a great signal, <laughs> you're still going to lose, you know, yeah. so you got to get that right. Sorry, right. I'm getting a whole lot of alerts now because Santa Claus is still in the air, man. Have a good one, Brian. I will Sounds see good. you next week. Yeah, take care, Chris. Take care, everyone.